Now we're going to move on towards the monetary side of the economy. So firstly, to get an introduction into that, let's look at money itself. What is money? We've spoken a little bit about it. It's a medium of exchange. People use it to purchase different goods and it's generally accepted. It's also a unit of account. So the rand that we have, every rand on every note is the same. It's a unit of account. It's generalized and it's accepted by everybody and it's the same specific value. It's also a store of value. So instead of having money in a bank which will earn money or which will earn interest, the money as currency, as notes itself, it's a store of value. That 20 rand, if you put it under your bed, next week it's still going to be 20 rand. So it stores that value. You do need to know some definitions of money supply in the economy. The smallest definition is M1. And that's made up of currency, which is notes and coins in circulation in the economy, plus checkable deposits. Checkable deposits are deposits that you have in the bank, but you can use a check to issue them. You can issue that cash outwards. So it's made up of all currency and checkable deposits. M2 is the next biggest definition of money supply in the economy, and that's given by M1, which is currency in terms of notes and coins and checkable deposits, plus savings deposits. So M2 is equal to M1 plus savings deposits and small time deposits and money market mutual funds. So let's go through that again. M2 is equal to M1 plus savings deposits plus small time deposits plus money market mutual funds. So we've got M1 now, we've got M2 and then finally the broadest definition of money supply in the economy is given by M3. That's given as M2 plus large time deposits. So just very large time deposits usually held by corporations. So we've got M1, the smallest characteristic of money supply in the economy, M2 and finally M3 which is equal to M2 plus large time deposits. Now, what makes money generally acceptable? Why do we accept rands and not some other monopoly type of money? Well, the main reason behind that is the Reserve Bank backs all the money that is out there in the economy. Back in the day, you used to be able to go to the Reserve Bank in theory and say, oh, can I please have a certain amount of gold per unit of currency? So you could take those rands to the Reserve Bank and get a specific amount of gold for those rands. But now, money is seen as legal tender in the economy. So the government writes and the Reserve Bank writes that the money is legal tender and that it can be used. It's important because it's accepted then as a medium of exchange and the way that the Reserve Bank keeps that money as a medium of exchange and generally accepted is to keep it as relatively scarce as possible. So the Reserve Bank doesn't print as much money as they can, they'll keep it scarce. The money supply is extremely important in the economy to be fixed so that it can be accepted as legal tender so that the purchasing power of your money remains the same. If there are cases of hyperinflation such as in Zimbabwe when too much money is issued, too much money is made, that money becomes almost worthless. You can have bundles and bundles of 1,000 Zimbabwean dollar notes. They even made a 100,000 Zimbabwean dollar note just to make it as more accepted as possible, to make it easier to use. So you keep that relative scarcity of money and you keep that money supply relatively fixed and then it will be used as legal tender and can be used by everyone and accepted and has a, a constant purchasing power. But purchasing power does change according to inflation. If inflation increases, it could result from a slight increase in the money supply from the Reserve Bank or from demand pull inflation or cost push inflation. If inflation increases, your purchasing power of your money will decrease. Let's say that rands is equal to 1 over the price. This is how you can view the purchasing power of your money. So if the price doubles, so price goes from 1 to 2, the rand, the purchasing power of your rand is going to half. So if P is equal to 1, then the purchasing power of your money is equal to 1. However, if P then doubles, if the price level doubles, it's going to say that the purchasing power of your money is a half. So this is a simple equation that you can use to check the purchasing power of, the money, of your money. How much goods and how much in terms of the value of goods can you buy with the notes and the currency that you have.